for you? What, what do you think an ideal meal would be for somebody before like a speed workout or like a long intense run or a race even? Mm -hmm. So all of those would warrant different fueling um, right. schedules, but let's just say general workout, um, just a normal training run. 30 to 60 minutes beforehand, you'll want to have some simple carbohydrates and about 30 to 60 grams of that simple carbohydrates. So that could be a banana, that could be a slice of toast with peanut butter and a banana, it could be a few graham crackers. If you're training really early in the morning and you just don't have an appetite at all, that's where energy chews, sports drinks can come in handy because they're really simple sugars and your body breaks them down easily. You want something low in fiber because that will slow down your digestion. And when you're running, when you're active, you don't want your blood to be going to your stomach. You want it to be going to your working muscles. So simple carbs, 30 to 60 grams of those 30 to 60 minutes before you run. That's perfect. That's, that's simple enough to remember. I think, um, what is the difference between simple and complex carbs? I hear people talk about that a lot. I kind of have an idea, I guess, but I'd love to hear it from you. Yeah. So simple carbohydrates, as the name suggests, are simple and easily broken down by our body. So we're thinking our white bread, uh, white pasta, uh, pretzels, um, what else? Applesauce, things like that. Complex carbs are going to be a lot more fibrous. So whole I almost said whole meal because that's what it is in New Zealand, but whole wheat, um, whole grain options, um, your potatoes, or sorry, sweet potatoes are a little more um, complex than white potatoes, foods like that. And really you need both of them, but there's a time and place. So this also is where the general population nutrition recommendations get muddle, gets muddled with your athletic population because Usually white bread is like the worst thing in the world to a lot of people, but for your active individuals, for people who are running a lot, um, needing a lot of that quick energy, white bread is going to settle in your stomach a lot nicer than wheat bread. So say if you are eating within that hour um, before or after exercise, you're going to want to opt for those simple carbohydrates because that's what's going to sit in your stomach better. That's what your body's going to break down quicker. Whereas outside of your training, say you're having lunch three hours later or you're eating a meal three to four hours before you run, that's where the complex carbohydrates come in because they give your body fiber and that helps with our gut health and our gut microbiome. Okay. Okay. So complex carbs, the further out from the run or after the run, and then simple carbs before. Is there a, a, I apologize if you just mentioned this. I don't think you did, but uh, is there um, benefit to like just like cramming in a bunch of simple carbs right after a workout to like refuel the glycogen in your muscles? I've heard a lot of people will do that. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a key piece to recovery nutrition. There's often a lot of emphasis on protein, but carbohydrates are needed just as much for exactly what you just said. We're, we're using our glycogen stores during our runs, during our exercise. So we want to replenish them so that you have energy throughout the rest of the day and for your next run. So generally speaking, a three to one carbohydrate to protein ratio. Um, if it's an even longer run or a higher intensity, that might look like four to one. So say if you're having 20 grams of protein, 60 to 80 grams of carbohydrates to go with it. Interesting. I hear everybody talk about protein following a workout, but mm -hmm. I feel like I I've re more recently heard people talking about carbs after a workout, but I feel like nobody ever talks about carbs. I, or at least I feel like I never used to hear people talk about carbs following a mm -hmm. workout. Um, okay. That's a, that's a good tip. Um, I think this is a good segue into what, like the most popular question we got <laughs> on on the Instagram poll I did, and that is uh, regarding the animal based diet versus like vegan diet. Uh, are either one of them sustainable if you're marathon training, mm -hmm. um, and are either one of them good at all? Well, it it really depends on your lifestyle and what makes you feel good. I always say the best diet for yourself is the one 
that you can do for the rest of your life and it makes you feel good. So not something that you're doing for 30 days or, or eight week challenges, but something that you know that you can keep doing for the rest of your life. So when it comes to, say, a more plant-based or a vegan diet, you can absolutely do that as a marathon runner. But there's some more key nutrients that you want to be aware of so that your bones and your muscles are still looked after. So those being calcium for your bone health. Usually that comes from dairy products. But for vegans, obviously there's not going to be dairy. So you'll want to look for soy products, tofu, um, fortified milks, products like that. And the other nutrient would be um, protein intake as a vegan. A lot of protein may come from beans um, and nuts and seeds. So those are mixed with fats. Those are mixed with carbohydrates. So it's not really a pure protein source like, say, chicken or eggs. So being strategic with protein intake so that you are getting enough to recover for your recover your muscles and um, be ready for your next training bout. Um, and I'd also even add in omega threes just for inflammation. So eating your walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, um, getting omega threes through your nuts and seeds for inflammation as well. Um, and then I guess if we're going to talk about the animal based diet, just so that we're all on the same page talking about the same thing, mostly meat forward, some fruits, um, pretty low vegetables and carbohydrates. Um, fill me in. What's your take on the carbohydrates and how they fit in with the animal based diet? Um, I think again, it's, it's very subjective to yeah. whoever's doing it, but, um, cause I, I generally follow that diet. And so what I do, uh, it's like meat, fruit um i don't count carbs or anything like mm -hmm. that um but the vast majority of carbs come from fruit um and then some from like dairy products uh like like milk or cheese and then eggs so i don't i don't think eggs have carbs but um that's like the majority of what i eat or what i think most people would consider the animal based diet mm -hmm. yeah so with that just being strategic around your training and making sure that you're getting enough carbohydrates to fuel your training and then having that protein after your workout alongside those carbohydrates so that you're getting all of your macronutrients. Um, it's really just a timing thing versus just, I feel like people kind of just throw these diets out and just don't think about where these foods are eaten throughout the day, especially in relation to their training and their exercise. So you're not going to be eating steak 30 minutes before you run. Like you're probably going to feel awful if you do that. Right. <laughs> you're you're going to want to have those simple carbohydrates, a banana, slice of toast, things like that. Um, in terms of the diet being low in vegetables, with running and with um, being highly active, we still want to have our vegetables for the inflammation management side of things. But we don't want to be eating vegetables right before um, your training because those are very fibrous, will slow down your gut. So there is timing to go with the vegetables as well. Um, there's no harm in eating vegetables outside of training just for overall health and well-being. Um, I don't think that any food group should really be like demonized or labeled good or bad, but really the idea is thinking big picture and timing. How do these foods fit into my diet according to what my training goals are, what my training plan is. Mm -hmm.